all the time. <laughs> glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh, yes. How many of y'all know we're in the last minutes? If you don't, you should. Yes, last minutes. Things are happening quickly, rapidly. As we've shared before that we are in the process, in transitions. There's a process where we got to go through, which is God is preparing for the crossover. Amen. We're going to cross over into eternity here soon. soon. Amen. <laughs> and, and in this crossover that we're, or in this process that we're crossing over, you know, there's an area where you can't cross over until you first disconnect. Amen. And you first, you can't connect until you first disconnect. So God is bringing us through this process of transition. Many will buck it. Hello? Because things are going to be exposed in themselves that they can't see, but they're going to be exposed. Many people are going to be offended. What's God trying to do? He's trying to bring divine order in the whole body. He's trying to bring unity in the whole body. And what did he say Friday night? I'm taking possession of my temple. I'm taking possession of my temple. So if he's preparing to take possession of his temple, which is all of us, you can be for sure that there's going to be manifestations of rebellion, of antichrist spirits. Amen? And in this, we must be prepared. And all of these things that God is doing, again, it's that process so that we can reconnect into his presence, into his glory, into his love. Not fulfilling. One of the things he's exposing is the heart. Amen? The heart. What's the heart? It's the core of desire. Too many people are doing their own desire without seeking the Lord. The Bible says seek him. Acknowledge the Lord and he'll direct your steps. Amen? He'll establish your thoughts. He'll establish you. The problem is, is people are just moving out by what they feel. That desire within the heart, the heart's desires, well, it must be God. It's my desire. No, it isn't. <laughs> there are so many rules that God has. It's real simple. God doesn't promote things that he hates. Amen. <laughs> That's a simple area. <laughs> he doesn't promote things he hates. Hello? He doesn't interrupt himself. Amen. And he doesn't cause a stumbling block to the righteous. He leads us. So in this, in this transition that we're going through, there's something I've wanted to talk about, and I just haven't had an opportunity. <laughs> so let's go to 2 Timothy first. Glory. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2 verse 1. Let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace. That means strong in the what? In the plan. Strong in the what? Plan. Not our plan. Not assuming plan. In his plan. Absolute plan. Everyone say absolute plan. It's the word to be strong in it. That means that we're to be sold out and walking in it. Amen. That is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful. What's a faithful person? Consistent, obedient, submissive. Hello? Not a drifter. Not an up-and-downer. Emotionally led. A faithful person is never led by emotion because they become unfaithful. <laughs> someone who's connected. Someone you can trust. Amen? You know. You know whether you can trust someone or not. You know whether they're emotionally misled. You know whether they, when they say they're going to do something, they're going to do something. Or if they say they're going to do something, you've got a eh, maybe 50-50 chance. That's not a faithful person. Amen? A faithful person also promotes the things of God. Looks to expand the kingdom of God. Amen? All right, let's go a little further. Men who are able to 
teach others also. In other words, teach others all in the area of being a witness. You know, your actions, your responses is what teaches more than anything. And, of course, your reactions really teach. Verse 3. You, therefore, must endure. Oh, yes. Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I think many people forget that they're in a war and that we are soldiers. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. Hmm. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes he also, he, in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Again, we must endure the process, that process of transition, that process of crossing over, that process <laughs> of disconnect. There's now a, a disconnect in the area. What's he talking about? Burying yourself. Doing what? Burying yourself. You know what you need to bury yourself? A shovel. Hello. A what? A shovel. So we're going to talk about the shovel and the sword today. Okay? Amen? Why? Because without a shovel, the sword ain't coming. I want you to understand something, that the sword of the Spirit is only activated through the divine nature. I want to say that again because too many people think they can just throw the Word of God out and it's going to come back good. No way. It's got to be backed by the anointing. That means that you must be in and partaker of the divine nature for the sword of the Spirit to operate accordingly. Amen? This is not a, a flesh or soulless operation. This is called the sword of the Spirit. In other words, you are using God's Word and His breath to accomplish. So the divine nature is a part of God's Word and His breath. Without the divine nature, a person is a substance in the area of selfishness, self-righteousness, and selfish ambitions. So one of the things that's being dismantled and disconnected, so your new man, your new creation, must come to a place where he's disconnected, dismantled, and dissolved in the nature, the human nature. So we are in that process of disconnect, dismantle, and dissolve. According to the what? Affairs of this world. In other words, cares and attachments and connections. If we're still connected to these things and a selfish desire, well, this is what I want to do instead of what he wants to do. And again, the problem is because people are really not seeking first. They're not asking first. They're just doing it on an assumption. And that's called presumptuous sin. Is everybody okay? The shovel and the sword. Luke 14. Hallelujah. The shovel and the sword. Verse 25, Luke 14, 25. Is everybody there? Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and he said to them. He turned and said to a couple of them, one of them, all of them. If anyone comes after me. And does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, he cannot be my image. He cannot be my likeness. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, 
saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Hmm. Does everybody see that? Oh, what king going out to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a tremendous phase, a tremendous quote. Does not forsake all. All. See, this is the area where there's limitations. People are not forsaking all. They're still trying to build themselves. They're still trying to build their lives. They're still trying to build on selfish ambitions. They're still trying to build on selfish emotions. This is where God's saying, aren't I enough? Aren't I enough? Ooh, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all, that he has cannot be my disciple. In other words, people still think that they own something. You and I don't own nothing. Everything is a lender. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Everything that's been given to us is lent to us. You and I are stewards of everything, not owners. Amen? He is the owner. We are the stewards. We may be the landlords, but he's still the owner. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. He says, salt is good, but if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, there's, you can't follow without a fight. Amen? You and I must hate the ways of the world. You know, from the moment that we were born, we were born in traditions of men. We had family gatherings and all kinds of other things and whatever. We had difficulties. We had gossip in the family. We had prejudice in the family. But there's all kinds of stuff that was in the family. It was messed up. <laughs> All of our families are messed up. Amen? Even Adam and Eve became messed up. Dysfunctional. Out of order. We inherited all of this stuff. And God is bringing us through the process of those little things that we're still holding on to. To family, human, traditions. Does everybody get it? To what? Family, human traditions. Familiar tr traditions. Things that bring a false fulfillment. I'm not saying you're supposed to not, you're supposed to hate your mother and father and stuff like that to that degree. Amen? But in other words, compared to the kingdom of God, we have no association. Here is your family. Does everybody understand it? Your family are believers. We are brothers and sisters, not friends. I don't need any more friends. I had enough out there. And they all turned on me anyways, eventually. <laughs> Especially when I became a believer. Amen? So friends are, you know, people say, man, I want to be a friend of yours. Forget it. I don't want to be your friend. You either be my brother and sister or nothing. And too many people are trying to come. Listen, this is where people backslide. God didn't call us to friendship. He called us to family, eternal family, not temporary. We've been taken out of our temporary family and put in an eternal family. We should be fighting for each other, not at each other. You know, I, I, it still baffles me. And that era where people ain't got, they don't have that yet. And I know the Holy Spirit's going, tch, 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 tch. come on, wake up. Where are you be? Some of us feel a slap in the back of the head. Maybe a kick in the butt. Well, come on, stop your foolishness. Stop your soulishness. Stop the promoting of your own desires. And get disconnected so you can cross over. 
Here, take the anointed shovel. And bury yourself. <laughs> Matthew 10. Glory. Matthew ten thirty four. Hallelujah. Here we go again. Are you ready? Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. We do not live our life around our families, even though we live with them. Does everybody get it? We live our life around the will of God. We live a life around his presence. What good are you to your kids if you're in the flesh? Amen? What good are you to your spouse if you're in the flesh? None. We've got to come out of this stuff. Because things are about to explode. They're already starting. And we must come to a reality of this. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Praise God. Is everybody okay? He didn't come to bring a sword. I mean, he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a shovel and a sword. <laughs> and see, those who are close to you be your, will betray you. If they're in the flesh. Listen, anybody, per, any person can come out of the spirit into the flesh and betray you. What, what do you think when people backslide? They become betrayers. Amen? Betrayers are what? They may betray you, but they actually betrayed God and everything that he's done for them. Remember, he, the, what David said, look, at I've not, it's not about sinning against man. I've sinned against you. You who can give life and take it. But he's merciful. He's loving. His love for us is unconditional. And our love for him must be unconditional. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So he didn't answer what you asked for, Gucci Goo. Too bad, little baby. It wasn't in God's timing. He isn't going to give you anything more than you can handle. Even though in your carnal mind you think you can handle it. He knows what the end result is, not us. Everything must be according to his time, not ours. Amen? But that must be an understanding. See, the purpose of the shovel and the sword is so that we can bury ourselves, get, bury all of those things from your past life, from everything that's connected to us. That process of disconnect is constant. You know, the impressions that we constantly get are from our past. Amen? From our flesh. Hello? And from the world of influence. These spirits, everything you see, traumas, everything. You know, everything is trying to bring us into a place of chaotic. So we become confused. We become fearful. See, fear will disconnect you instantly. As soon as fear comes, poof, you can't see, you can't receive. You, you're, the, the sound mind is nullified. People scream out when they fear. Ah! 
I don't see anything of God in that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 4. Couldn't even get out the name of Jesus. And if you expect the Holy Spirit to interpret it, he isn't going to. Unless you first say, dear Jesus, ah, then that's different. Hebrew 4. <laughs> the sword and the, I mean, the shovel and the sword. I actually started this off with the sword and the spirit. Hallelujah. But it's the shovel and the sword. Because without bearing yourself, there is no sword. Amen. Hebrew 4, verse 11. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Now I want to share something with you that may sound very strange, but it's okay. It wouldn't be the first time. There's a place of rest, okay? In this place of rest, it's called from revelation to revelation. It's a place of rest because you got the first revelation. You're maintaining what you're doing until the next revelation comes. Now, this is not soulish revelation, fleshly revelation, or imaginary revelation. This is revelation that is from God that comes to you. Because when revelation comes, it helps you to maintain restraints of the flesh and of the soul. Amen? When revelation comes, there's a process. There's actually a measurement from revelation to revelation. In between that time, that rest is called faith. The measurement from revelation to revelation is called faith. Does everybody got it? You might get it. Revelation to revelation in that place of rest. Why? When you're in a place of rest, you're completely trusting. Faith must be activated from revelation to revelation or you don't make it. You usually react before the next revelation. You manifest before the next revelation. That means faith has been nullified. Now, you will be attacked during that time of rest. Amen? You're going to want to do something to fulfill your own desire. But the purpose of the revelation is so that there's a fulfillment from God that lasts you to the next revelation, to the next time you get into his presence, to the next event, to the next visitation, to the next whatever it is that he has for you to fill you in fulfillment. Amen? That time is called, that measurement from revelation to revelation is called faith. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's go a little further. Glory. Okay. Um, verse 6. That's why he said, uh, God rested on the seventh day. Again, in this place they shall not. Or I guess I'm not too far ahead. Okay. <laughs> is everybody there? For the word of God is what? The word of, let's go at verse 11 again. Let us therefore enter, be diligent to enter the what? The rest what is the rest? It is the time between revelation, from one revelation to another. You are into a rest. And that time of measurement is called faith. Hallelujah. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul. And spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart or the desires of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from its sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who, to whom we must give account. Very powerful. So the sword is used. Only to those that are partakers of the divine nature. Does everybody get it? Now, God is merciful. The, again, the sword is used, but then the seed is used to what? Sow. 
So until a person learns how to activate the sword, he has seed. So when he speaks the word, he's sowing the seed. Does everybody get it? He's sowing into the spirit with the seed. But the sword is not activated until a person becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Because that is a part of the divine nature. The sword of the spirit is a fruit of the divine nature. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Second Peter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Shovel and sword. Glory to God. So our testing of our faith to seeing if we are genuine is being examined by God. Amen? And where is your, the greatest examination is through testing, isn't it? Through trials. Amen? So in that time of rest, God really checks us out. 2 Peter 1. Is everybody there? Verse 2. Let's speak of grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be what? partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The divine nature. The holder of the sword of the spirit. Amen. In Romans 8. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. Verse 1. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who are in the anointing, who do not walk according to the flesh. Well, if you're in the anointing, you ain't walking according to the flesh. If you're partakers of the divine nature, you will not walk according to the flesh. Amen? Amen? But according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And what is the law of the Spirit of life? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement. So is there a requirement? Yeah, everything must have a requirement to be met. Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. That's where you self-examine yourself. Where is your focus more towards? For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, wow. again, the law of the spirit of life is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow all the way to the end. There's an area what we've talked about before, and it, 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 we're... We must maintain our identity. When you get disconnected from the divine nature, you begin to drift from your identity. Your identity helps you to stay connected to divine nature. Now, there's something vitally important. 
which must be activated in your life all the time. And this is what will hold your divine nature in place. You must come to the realization that you are called to battle. You must come to the realization that your purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. You must come to the realization that your destiny is to infiltrate the world system, rescue those who have been taken captive, and expand the kingdom of God. That must be activated to maintain your identity. Does everybody understand that? If it's, if it's nullified, if it's compromised, your identity begins to drift. Now, I want you to know that your identity is also a protector of the divine nature. You're not your old identity, amen? Your new identity in Christ. Again, please grab hold of this. This must be activated in everything you do, wherever you go. This must be there. It must be right there, tangible, grabbable, right in front of you. I'm called to battle. My purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. My destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue. That's activated. That's what will maintain your identity. When it's compromised, your identity begins to dismantle. Is everybody okay? Whatever is going on, wherever you go, that must be a part of what you're doing. That is your life now. If it's not your life, you cannot partake in a divine nature. Too many people are getting disconnected from the divine nature, walking in fear, walking in weakness, walking in sickness, walking in all kinds of things, not overcoming. Amen? Amen? They're not walking in the power of God. Amen. The power of God overcomes. It overcomes. You shouldn't need someone else to help you overcome. He is in you is greater than he is in the world. How much more do you need? <laughs> Glory to God. It's individuals that are not partakers of the divine nature. It fall into trouble. Amen? Luke 9. And don't butt butt. No butt butt. Luke 9. We are going to, Tuesday, we are going to bring, there's a lot of manifestations happening in the Middle East. I'm going to bring up to date some of the things that are going on because prophetically things are manifesting quickly. Quickly. That's why we know Jesus. You know, every, everything that happens to Israel reflects onto us. Amen? So whatever is going on there is going to be reflecting to us, the body. That's the time clock of everything. Everything. You look to Israel for everything, and you'll know what's going on with you in the body of Christ. Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, again, all, not a few. If anyone desires to come after me, he must take his shovel and bury himself. Amen? Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or Lost. Now, I mean, he's given us this process in the area where it is the law of the spirit of life. Amen? We are to deny ourselves. That is the basic of everything that is required. And everything you do, 
everything you say, everything you think, everything you purchase, everything. Everything must be connected to approval with Him. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. He is right there. What do you think, Holy Spirit? Of course, you can name the Holy Spirit whatever you want. It better not be offensive. Buddy and I were quite tight. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was not imaginary. <laughs> But in that, the Holy Spirit guides us. But He's holy. He's the holy breath of God Almighty. Can you imagine the holy breath of God Almighty is walking with you, in you, and guiding you? If you let Him. But it's not easy if you're not partaking of the divine nature because the divine nature is always submissive to the voice of God. It's always desiring the voice of God. The divine nature desires the presence of God. He's always encouraging us to walk away from ourselves, from the world, and from the things that entangle us. Amen? He's always encouraging us to take dominion. He's always telling us, listen, you're blessed with every spiritual blessing, seated in heavenly places. I'm in you, he says. I'm greater than anything. Why? Because I created it all. Heck, you have the creator in you. The one that created demons and everything else. What the heck? Look in a mirror and get rid of them. <laughs> and don't sit down and have a conversation with them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 6. Romans 6. Glory. The shovel and the sword. Oh, yes. Verse 1. Is everybody there? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Hell, heck no. Now look it. Hell no. <laughs> Shall we continue in sin that the plan of God, amen, may abound? Hell no. Say no to hell. Amen. It's not a cuss word, man. Is everybody okay? <laughs> I know you want to tell, tell the devil, go to hell, but you can send him to the pit. Although he's ruler there, he's going to probably just go down there and have a party. Hallelujah. Certainly not, he says. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his what? Death. Oh, yes. See, the problem is the enemy wants to resurrect your old man all the time. So before you bury him, hit him with a shovel. Therefore, that way he doesn't give you any problem. If he's knocked out, no problem. Just bury him. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Can you walk in the newness of life if you're not buried? No. For if we have been under or united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. That's new man. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, buried, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of 
sin. Verse 7. Now, this is powerful. I love this verse. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Let's say that again. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, I want you to know that you can't use anybody else's shovel. Okay? Nobody else can bury you. That is your choice. Even though you'd like to bury a few people, you can't. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is everybody okay? Matthew 6. I know there's a few people everybody would like to bury. <laughs> Hallelujah. And hope they get resurrected in Christ. Anyways. <laughs> Send them to the jail of salvation. Glory. I know you might think that sometimes you know, somebody's I'd like to bury that person. But it doesn't mean you want to kill them. You just want them to get saved and born so that they're not living in the dead. See, that's dead zone. Amen? But if we can help them, you know, you <laughs> Glory to God. You know, just, you might want to say to somebody, yeah, where's your shovel? <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew 6, verse something, 19. Is everybody there? Do not lay up for yourselves what? Treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. In other words, where your desire is. Amen? That's what's exposing your heart. Amen? Oh, praise God. Let's go on further. Verse 22. The lamp of the body is, is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. 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 Money is a great stumbling block. And is a resurrector, the old man. The love of money is the root of all evil. Amen? You know, Unless that, we've got to come to a place where we're recognizing the building of God's temple is not with money. Amen? It's with the Word of God. It's with justice. It's with obedience. It's with endurance. It's with submission. Amen? It's with, by, led by the Spirit of God. Now, you've got to look at something right now because so many people, and because of the chaos that things have been going on, the lack of funds and businesses shutting down and everything, even though things are beginning to build up again, people are still getting into the place to try to rebuild what they've, been, what they've lost. So they're spending more time in trying to rebuild instead of spending more time in God's presence. See, this is where the Lord builds the house and not us. How many of you know He can do anything? He can send someone to say, hey, I said, you need help. Well, who sent you? I don't know. I had a dream. The Lord told me to do this. Oh, really? Here's an envelope and a shovel. See, there's nothing impossible with God. Nothing. But we must be partakers of the divine nature. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Again, what is the first thing he steals? Your identity of who you are. You know, God's going, that's my child. You start drifting from your identity. He's going, uh, uh, who am I? 
See, you're not activating your identity as a child and soldier, warrior, and anointed offspring. We must maintain our identity. How do we maintain our identity? By keeping active, active what? That you are called. Amen? That you have a purpose and a destiny. And activating these things of what you're to do with them. Why? So the enemy doesn't come and compromise. So he doesn't come and cause you to drift. So you don't sell out your own identity. See, because right now people are selling out their souls. They're selling out their identities. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but there are a lot of pastors who are stepping down from being a pastor. Even writers of music, that great music, and are stepping down saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe that a, a, there's a God that would allow so much stuff to happen. See, God gave the world to man. Amen? Man, and listen, if the body of Christ wouldn't get so involved in traditions of men, doctrines of demons, religious things, and stop fighting among one, or one another and be unified in the spirit with like mind and like heart and like will, the body of Christ would be expanded and already taken over things. But God knew how goofy we would get. I mean, you know, when I came into the kingdom of God, after a period of time, I realized that there wasn't much difference in how people reacted towards one another. In fact, when I was in the world, I had closer friends. But then, of course, they became my enemy. But it's amazing the lack of love in God's body. It's amazing to me. And again, why is that? Because they're not crossing over, because they're not connecting. They're not partaking in a divine nature. They're not maintaining their identity of who they are and the realization that they're standing before God all the time. Not just when they think about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Money is going to be a big stumbling block in this recovery. God is about to pour out his spirit. He's about to bless a lot of his people. Some of them, they'll be delayed. Some of them will come quickly. You know, people, you know whether you have a problem with money or not. You know it. God knows it. Malachi 3. Hallelujah. Malachi 3, verse 8. Oh, yes. Is everybody there? Will a man rob God? Well, you have to be a plumb nut. Now, we used to rob God B.C. all the time. And I was brought up, and even when I went to church, they'd... They robbed God. They put in whatever they felt. Buck 25, you know, $2 when they were making thousands a week. They put more money on betting on football than they put in the offering. I was one of those. Don't laugh here. Anyways, will man rob God? <laughs> Yeah, you have what? Robbed me. But you say what? In what way have we robbed you? In what? Tithes and offerings. You are what? Curse or the curse. For you have robbed me even this whole nation. Just think how many people robbed God when they got that stimulus check. Loads of people. Oh, this is mine. What does the word say? Make sure you give increase of your, even your first fruits. People rob God, and then they wonder why they're going through stuff. Amen? 
He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food for who? My house, my people. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out your, for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. The problem is, is people can't wait for it. They, see, they take this word, they obey, then they expect God to do it the next day. Amen? I mean, okay, I did this, Lord. How about today? I need the, you know. He says, no, show me again. Show me again, 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 again. Stay faithful to it. Faithful is repeating the same righteous thing. Hallelujah. Look at verse 11, he says. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you what? Blessed. For you will be a, a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Powerful. See, but again, this falls in that place of trust. This is where you've gone from revelation and rest, waiting for next revelation. What are you going to do in between? That's a measurement of your faith. Maintaining your identity, keeping things activated, stirring yourself up. Does everybody get it? Ties, offerings, vows. How many about vows? People say, I'm going to do this and don't do it. Unfulfilled vows brings a curse on a person. And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? These are things that will resurrect the old man. Remember, the devil knows about resurrection power. And he will try to get your old man resurrected and nullify your new man. So where the flesh is now running the spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, your spirit. Colossians 2, is everybody okay? Colossians chapter 2. Now, make sure you don't use the shovel for spiritual warfare. Amen? The shovel is not to be used for spiritual warfare. It's to be used to bury yourself. Not that I've not used the shovel to cut off some snakes' heads, because I have. And my wife's um, sharp knives. That's why I got a machete so I don't run to the kitchen anymore. Hallelujah. Nothing better than a dead snake. Colossians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Glory to God. In verse 4. Let's speak it together. Now this I say, lest any of you should dis deceive, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it, with thanksgiving. Beware lest any of one cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, which is uh, don't entangle yourself with affairs, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Be careful the traditions of men. Again, we've got to start, start into that place where we stop looking at human. You're no longer human. You may have a human form, but you're not human. Humans act like humans. We act like Christ. That's the difference. Amen? Traditions of men. Listen, you bury the human part so that the divine nature can, can be ma manifested. 
We want to advance with the sword of the Spirit. It's used to advance. It's used to take territory. It's used to destroy works of the enemy. It's used. Amen? For the kingdom of Christ, not for selfish gain. Galatians 5. Galatians 5.16. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you wish or that you desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now again, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies, envy, murders, and drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. What's the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. Don't forget that. Joy. Love. Joy and peace. Hello. That'll allow you to know whether you're partaking of divine nature. Love, joy, and peace. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. That means control over yourself. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have buried the flesh, crucified it, with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, which will nullify the divine nature and partaking of it, or provoking one another, or envying one another. And I want to close at 1 Peter 4. Everybody okay? First Peter chapter four. Let's speak it. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mind, the same way of thinking. Again, arming ourselves with the same way of thinking. So we've got to get into that place where we are activating. The things of God. I'm called to battle. My purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. My destiny is to infiltrate the world system. See, there's three eyes there. I am called. It's the only time you get to promote I. Amen? I have a purpose. And I have a destiny. Those three eyes will identify yourself with the great I am. Amen? So we've got to activate those things. Keep them activated. Why? Why? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What's my call? What's my destiny? You know it. That's what's going to keep your identity. Again, the enemy's going to try to compromise your identity. If you can compromise your identity, it's a process of disconnecting you from the divine nature. Amen? Therefore, since Christ died, suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with also the same way of thinking. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh or in the, uh, or in the human nature for the loss of men, but the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in the lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominations, and of idolatry, abominable idolatry. And regarding these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Why? Because you are now the divine nature. Remember, the human nature hates the divine nature. Amen? 
So what do you expect humans to think of you? They're going to hate you. They hate Trump. They don't even know why, because they're humanites. People hate. It's a mayor. Listen, there's a lot of believers that hate him. Why? Because they're not, they're not Christians, even though they call themselves Christians. They're not. Why? Because the fruit of a, the Spirit is what? What's the first one? Love. It's not hate. And my words to hate the things of the world, not man. You might want to bury some, but you don't hate them. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 5. It says that they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let them speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let them do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the, and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name. Is everybody okay? Did you get this? Vital. Maintaining your identity. Amen? Keeping it active. Walking in the Spirit. Burying yourself. Use the shovel. You know what the shovel is? Your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't dig up the old man. Keep him buried. <laughs> Amen? And when he comes up, just hit him. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory and honor and praise, Master. Bring to remembrance that we become like-minded and like-hearted. That we think the way you think. And that we make decisions according to your ways and not our own. That our desires will be your desires. As we exchange our presence and human nature for your presence and divine nature in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any of your time.